Hello, School Transportation Nation. Tony Corbin here, publisher, president, School Transportation News. We're excited to be here, and so is TransFinder, our sponsor, leader in school bus routing software. And we are prepping for School Bus Safety Week. Mr. Ryan Gray, excited to uh, talk to you about that as well. Hello, everybody. And also, we have our very special guest, associate editor, Taylor Hannon. Hello. Fresh off the STN Expo Indy. I think she's got her fashion report for the best dress that she's going to hit a little bit later. But uh, first up, last week, uh, we were in Indianapolis, first in-person conference in over two years or something crazy like that. It's hard to believe. Taylor, I know that uh, just like the rest of us, this was your first show in a, in a while. Was there anything that jumped out at you uh, that you saw or heard? I think I calculated it, Ryan. It was like 26 months, right, since our last wow. show in person in Reno, Nevada in July 2019. So that's that's crazy, right, to be back in person. But I don't know. There was just so much going on. It was so great to be back on the trade show floor, seeing all the different products that are out there. We had new products, a lot of, you know, cleaning, disinfecting, that kind of thing, you know, and then a lot of products that focus on, you know, the danger zone, that kind of around the school bus area, whether it be cameras, lighting, going in that direction, but just just so much going on, so much energy. Everyone was just so happy to be back. I think that's what I felt, that presence of, of excitement, right, that we've missed for so long. Yeah, exactly. And there was a lot of great discussions. Uh, Tony, you know, you and I touched on it a little bit uh, last week when we talked with Nate Owens from Indianapolis during the show. But, you know, a, a lot of folks that were just, you know, sharing ideas, problem solving, troubleshooting, whatever you want to call it, crowdsourcing, obviously a, a lot of discussion around the school bus driver shortage and shortages in general. I mean, we had a session on the mechanic shortage. We had some some side discussions about dispatcher shortage. So there's a dispatcher article coming out in our November issue. Uh, we're short supplies. It had some a lot of conversations on the trade show floor, Tony, um, with different suppliers talking about like how how crazy it is right now. You know, what did you hear in terms of, uh, of shortages? Yeah. I mean, in general, I think what we're seeing is chip shortages affect the manufacturers across the board. Obviously, chassis shortages have affected some of the type A manufacturers, but I really think technology is impacted. And we've kind of got this 3G sunset. So people are trying to replace their GPS units and chip shortage, right? N not the manufacturer's fault. It's just a global supply chain issue. And here it is rearing its head. And I know everybody's trying to get new vehicles. They're ordering, you know, I hear that from OEMs all day long that, hey, our order blocks closed. We're already into 2022, but hey, don't expect to get your buses like how it used to be. So that's a really big thing. And kind of Taylor touched on it too. We're, we're seeing a lot of this huge emergence of health and wellness products. We saw a lot of companies that do air purification, ionization, filtration. And uh, I know our own Taylor Hannon wrote a great article on the stnonline.com website about that kind of recapping what she saw. And there was some really great tech on display at the trade show. And I always like getting feedback from people when I'm on the floor, like, what are you looking for? And, and a lot of the vendors I talked to said, everybody was looking to buy so there was a lot of interest in technology, routing software, GPS, anything that was kind of optimization and efficiency based, because guess what? Driver shortage, staffing shortages, the only way to really hit on that technology. It's really a great way to look at kind of like if you're going to two tier, maybe it's three tier, maybe there's other opportunities there. So I think that those are big things that the industry is facing, Ryan. And we heard a lot of that on the floor. You know, regardless, attendance was down at the show, right? But guess what? 
it was all directors, everybody, contractors. We saw a lot of principals. We saw our friend uh, John Benish Jr. at Cook Illinois Company, who was the uh, immediate past president of NSTA. He was there. We saw some big contractors from Kauai, the really great seeing them out there, Akita Enterprises. We saw Apple Bus Company. So some big contractors showed up and we saw a lot of districts from a variety of different places. People that said, hey, I couldn't make it to STN Expo Reno, but I definitely wanted to make it to Indy. So you got options, right? And we got STN Expo Reno coming up December 4th through the 9th, as well as our Transporting Students with Disabilities Conference, November 17th through the 22nd. So those are some great shows, guys, for maybe you to check out. We've got some content up. It's all coming up really soon. I can't wait to see everybody again. I feel like it's just a really busy end of the year, Ryan. It's Taylor is, is, was running around taking photos of everything <laughs> at the show. It was a lot of fun to see that. I'm sure we'll have great content on the STN online website. We've got some photo galleries up. If you're not following us on social feeds, we have so much social media going. We did our transportation director summit. Uh, Ross Bernstein, who led that leadership discussion, talked about wearing the C, being that coach. And it was super exciting to see a room full of directors at Top Golf really have great conversations. I kicked it off at JW Marriott on the first day and kind of threw out big issues facing everybody, right? It's that health and wellness discussion. Going green. How are you guys dealing with this kind of emergence of EV, propane? What's the funding mean to you? Safety, loading and unloading zone safety, driver training like MAP21, ELDT. How's that going to affect you? So these are some really big topics that everybody got to kind of commiserate over, unpack, talk about. So it's good getting in front of leaders, letting them kind of talk it out together because you guys, you're all facing very similar situations. We saw that. We heard that. And it's good to brainstorm ideas on how to kind of address the challenges that are right in front of you. So those are my big takeaways, Ryan. Those are the big things I saw and experienced at the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The shortages all the way around, like we were talking about, just crazy. When I was preparing to, to leave for India, I heard on the radio that out here, Port of Long Beach, which is the, the largest port of Los Angeles, I guess, but it's, it's in Long Beach. It's like the largest port uh, in the United States. You know, heard uh, this radio report talking about all these cargo ships that are parked offshore because they can't come in because there's not enough dock workers. There's not enough longshoremen and all. Yeah, thousands of ships. So, yeah. And so the products that are there are sitting offshore. They can't, they can't even get to market. So, you know, somebody was telling me, a, a transportation director was telling me that he was okay with his most recent order, but the one coming up, the OEM is already telling him or the dealer is already telling him it's going to be at least 2024 before those buses get to him. Heard over and over again about buses parked in the parking lot outside of manufacturing plants because they're awaiting that one part or they don't have a stop arm or, you know, they don't they don't have something that they need so they can't deliver them. You know, certainly a lot of conversation too, like you just talked about, Tony, with ELDT, the entry-level driver training rule. We have an article coming up on that as well in November, just a couple of weeks away. So lots of good stuff. And it's going to definitely give us plenty of more to talk about at TSD next month and a couple of weeks later in Reno in early December. So if you don't have your tickets, folks, go out and get them now because uh, they're going like hotcakes. So speaking of great content, it would be uh, remiss of me not to mention the current October issue. Uh, we have on the cover Antonio Civitella, the president and CEO of TransFinder, and Rick Walterscheid, the director of transportation at Goose Creek Consolidated ISD uh, there in the Houston area. Rick is dealing with the driver shortage just like everyone else. But as you mentioned, Tony, he's turning to technology to help him with that. So, uh, you know, catch that when you have the opportunity. Yeah, guys, when we were talking about this, Rick is actually going to be on the podcast coming up next week with us. So we're excited to interview him and talk to him. And before I wanted just to text him and I dropped him a line and I said, hey, Rick, how are you guys doing with the driver shortage? Right. It's a real issue. Everybody's faced with it. And he, you know, he wrote me back. He said, hey, they're currently out 15 of 280 drivers, often due to COVID. You know, it's a big issue. And now they need 30 
30 drivers. So it was 15, but because of COVID, it's 30. And how do they deal with that? And you know what he wrote me? They rely heavily on routing software along with GPS information to combine routes where they can, where it makes the most sense. They would rather combine than eliminate service due to the driver shortage. And guess what? They use TransFinder's intuitive and award-winning route finder plus routing software to get it done. That's because Route Finder Plus uses artificial intelligence optimization combined with Rick's staff's institutional knowledge. Their routes can be redrawn to have minimal impact on the community he serves. You know what, guys? If you're interested in learning more about TransFinder, you can reach out to them at getplus at transfinder.com. Also, they want to help you find drivers, engage them, have a webinar about how much drivers love their jobs. You can check out that content. So when you email them, write driver in the subject line when you drop them that email. Go to transfinder.com or give them a call at 800-373-3609. Ryan, let's talk school bus safety week. It's coming up. That's right. How are you guys preparing? Taylor, are you ready for school bus safety week? I am ready and I'm ready to hear what everyone else is doing to prepare for this, to celebrate their drivers, to celebrate the school bus. I am looking for content, looking for pictures, looking for information. So send that over to Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R at STNonline.com. But yeah, I'm ready to get writing on everything that's happening that week. It's the what 18th through the 22nd. Yeah, next week. The 22nd. Yeah. So it's coming up. Coming up quick. Yeah, absolutely. And and something that, uh, Tony, you had mentioned not too long ago, I think it was even at the the show last week, was that, you know, it's great that we have School Bus Safety Week every third week of October. Last month, we had School Bus Safety Month that the Senate passed. Uh, That was a big effort done in uh, the ninth consecutive time, I think, by the Child Safety Network and the Safe School Bus Initiative they have there. But we have to live this every day. And and a comment that I made during one of the sessions in, in Indianapolis was that if there's a silver lining to this past you know year and a half or so under covid is that school bus has really risen to the the top of the news cycle we've obviously seen a big boost from the electric uh, vehicle initiatives that you know the feds are really pushing but especially during covid-19 with So many school buses out there delivering food and school supplies, Wi-Fi, and a lot of them are still doing this. We know that, you know, there is a there is a dire emergency right now, a lot of emergencies. But in terms of of child nutrition, there's still so many children that are that are, you know, hungry every day. And we had a discussion uh, about that during a town hall that Derek Graham, consultant and former uh, NASDAQ president, kind of facilitated for us in Indianapolis. But, you know, it's really just kind of preaching the importance of school bus, relying on the media coverage, pushing media coverage in your area year round. We can't just wait until school bus safety week to do that. With that said, though, this is our time to shine as an industry. You know, like Taylor said, send us uh, your what you're doing. Send us photos, video if you have it. Tell us, in a, you know, what you're doing so that we can write an article. Go on our, our Facebook page and, and tell us you know, what's going on. With that said, Taylor, there's a lot of stuff that's been happening in terms of school bus safety, some bad things. The industry lost a child a couple weeks ago in Florida, a hit and run, illegal passing. Last I've heard, I think they were still looking for the motors. I don't know if they found him uh, or her, but what else are you seeing out there in terms of, of school bus safety? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the theme for those who, who just, you know, maybe it skipped their mind, but the theme is the be safe, know the danger zone. So that's kind of the focus. And we did have that 10 year old girl who was hit and killed in Florida while she was crossing the street to board her school bus. We also had that school bus driver in Washington, not really mm-hmm. about the danger zone, but, you know, an intruder boarded his bus and and stabbed him in front of the kids, which is crazy for me to think of those kids having to witness that. But, you know, that's another incident that happened. I've been tracking kind of the illegal passing incidents per se. And we actually just had a 10 year old hit by a school bus in North Carolina. And that was in September. So it's not just illegal passing, Ryan. The school bus is also involved in those incidents. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I mean, it it happens. And so it's just raising that awareness. What can we do as an industry to make sure these incidents don't happen? 
Absolutely. And as for, for so many years, the conversation has been about um, proper mirror adjustment and training around the, the danger zone. And really, you know, yeah, that danger zone, if you you know don't know what that is, it's about that 12 foot kind of box around the school bus. It's considered the, the most dangerous part of the, the school bus ride for children. And you're right. You know, it's not simply illegal passing. I think, you know, stats from the feds indicate that uh, actually more kids are hit by their own school bus than by an illegal passer. Now, granted, that doesn't diminish the fact that we have all of these, you know, illegal passers every year. Um, hopefully, this spring, NASDIPS can get back on track with its annual survey of states to kind of get an indication of that problem. But but certainly, you know, training is is paramount. And, you know, it, it's really a bus loading and unloading issue, not just a, a danger zone issue, because there's so much that goes into it. There's a, a, you know, growing trend or at least conversation nationwide about eliminating crossing altogether. A lot of folks say that's just not feasible. But, you know, I've talked to a lot of people that say, well, yeah, there's a price tag to everything. But when you're looking at safety and trying to, re- you know, remove risk, that's, you know, doing everything possible to make the, the school bus ride and, and loading and loading as safe as possible for kids. You know, Ryan, we, we talked with Nate Oliver in the interview last week out in Indianapolis. And in that discussion, right, he mentioned that his new buses come with doors that have that sensor mm-hmm. too that can affect dragging, right? Because dragging is a big issue with safety. We hear it time and time again, kid gets a backpack caught in the door and he was super excited that his new buses came with that technology and he couldn't wait for it to get on all his buses. And he's quickly replacing his fleet. So yeah. that was one big thing that caught my attention last week about safety. And I know guys, you know, you can't replace your bus instantaneously, but always think about new technologies that are available to mitigate some of those things. And dragging is a real issue. Yeah, absolutely. And and with the electric doors, and that's been noted by a lot of people as part of the the issue around the dragging, where it's just become second nature now. The, The driver just hits a button and they're not you know, looking, they need to be scanning, they need to be using their mirrors. But a lot of times in the olden days, if a lot of you remember, and there's still buses out there that, that some of the older buses that have the manual doors, where you actually have to reach to your right to activate it, and it makes you look out the door. And when you open it and close it, now, a lot of times a driver just hits a button and they're off. And we've seen video that shows that. So certainly, yeah, there's, there's new technology um, all the time. It would be great to get more feedback on these new doors that aim to eliminate those student dragging. So yeah, there's just a, a bevy of opportunities out there. I keep saying that, you know, in, yes, there are challenges, but what are the opportunities? Taylor, you had something to add? Yeah, Ryan, I was going to say, we actually have one of those videos as a wire report of a driver who kind of just pushed the button and then you can see it, the kid getting dragged. But kind of firsthand experience for me, I was out visiting our TD of the year. So I'm not going to say where I was or who I was with, but I was riding on their school bus and I actually witnessed an illegal passing incident. I was shocked, but they were like, you know, unloading from the right hand side and a vehicle passed on the left. So it wasn't, you know, on the side where the kids were getting out. But But that that happens though. Yeah. yeah. People pass on the right. And and I witnessed it and I was like, oh my gosh. People pass on the right, which is the, the, those are the, the the most egregious cases, and you know there's we've seen video of that too. So uh, definitely, though, that that's that's great though. We'll be looking forward. That's a nice teaser, Taylor. So in a couple of weeks, <laughs> so I think we're going to have that guest on the podcast as well. So, but I I think Taylor, to your point though, that was one moment in time that you're sitting on this bus extrapolate that out. Right. And that's why we try to report on all these kind of surveys and national studies. And it's that one day measurement. And, you know, we try to draw from that as an industry and amplify that message to national media. And it like, you constantly just got to beat people over the head with this information to keep reminding them because they're so busy fumbling around in everyday life that this is an afterthought or it's not even a thought, right? It's just, they're going along their business and they didn't think they did anything wrong. And, you know, I know that there's technology we've seen like the extended stop arm, like you said, where it's almost like a train crossing gate going that they're going to hit, but people go as far as to swerve around it, right? Like 
it's just you do everything and and we've seen obviously the growth of illegal passing cameras you know that's the carrot or the stick right you want to hit them with a fine maybe they'll remember maybe maybe not yeah that's not going to save the kid's life yeah but it, it's just it's awareness very reactionary and i know there's predictive stop arms now too and radar and you know warning systems it's just you know the the rub though it comes back to how districts can afford all this. Certainly, the, there's a lot of money that's available right now from the CARES Act. But, you know, a lot of some of the, the concern I hear from folks is what about after that? And um, that's always the thing with grants, right? You know, it's like, oh, it's great. We have money now. But then they worry about, OK, we've put this on the books. And then what happens when that money dries up? You know, I think it, it comes back to just being as efficient as possible, utilizing that technology the best as your ability and making the case. And it comes back again to promoting the message of school bus safety and going to your school board, making sure your administrators know what you're doing and, you know, show them the results. And also with the students, because I think in the case that I witnessed, you know, it was another student who had passed the bus. And so it's like that where maybe these high schoolers just don't know. And so education, education to the community, education to your school district, like that is so important is and take advantage of it, you know, during the school bus safety week, make a assembly, you know, get people together and really share that information. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember when I was getting my uh, driver's license, you know, 100 years ago, I don't recall anything. Now, out here in California, it's a little bit different. I know that we don't have as much, you know, school busing in terms of especially per capita, like a lot of states do. But I don't recall anything about school buses. And I never really learned about that issue until I started writing about 20 years ago in this industry. So a lot there, though, to to, to chew on, prepare for. Certainly, the, you know, before we know it here, you know, the, the end of the year is coming, uh, the end of the calendar year, at least, you know, positioning ourselves to try to have the best possible 2022. You know, that's what it really comes down to for the kids and for the parents. So, you know, best of luck out there. That's, you know, I, you guys are all doing a great job and, you know, it is best of luck. Keep fighting the good fight. And again, with School Bus Safety Week coming up next week, now that's your time to, to tell your story. Yeah, don't forget as well. I mean, one of the things we talked about at the conference was, and this came from Ross Bernstein, our our keynote, as well as our leader at our Transportation Director Summit. He said, take that equity that you have with your community and amplify it through social media. Talk to your superintendent. Talk to your PTA. Try to get the word out to everyone and make it go viral. Make those videos. Make it known that school transportation is making an effort to keep their children safe. And I think as much as we talk about School Bus Safety Week, it's fine and dandy. But if you guys don't take the ball and run with it and share it with your community, it's going to go on deaf ears, right? And I think that is probably one of the bigger things. What is your plan? What is your school's plan? It doesn't all fall on transportation. Throw it back to your administration, your school board. Hey, what resources can you guys provide to help me amplify this school bus safety week message to our kids in our classrooms? Maybe again, maybe it's training kids, Ryan. We talk all about the driver's that are driving by these buses or the bus drivers, everyone's distracted. How can we train the kids? How can we remind them of the importance of safety around the school bus? Those are big things that I think could be that missing piece of the puzzle because kids are a big part of this, right? That they don't just run out into the street or run across, that they do pause and watch, right? And it takes constant reminders for children because of their age. Obviously, high school students are a little different than a kindergartner, but regardless, you know, all these lives are precious. And I think that we got to remind ourselves, how do we amplify the message in all these environments? So I, I think, guys, that is something to take away and really grab a hold of. You have a relentless vision to protect kids, to be safe. This is a way to show it to your community. Couldn't have said it better myself, Tony. Great point. I mean, that is what we need to do. Wonderful. 
Guys, you know, it was a great podcast. I appreciate Ryan Taylor jumping on, sharing what you saw at the show in Indianapolis. We're super pumped for the TSD conference. It's coming up about five weeks out. TSDconference.com, November 17th through 22. Our early bird deadline is coming up on October 15th. Save a hundred bucks on your registration. Don't miss out. Insane educational content. It's so good. You can go on the TSD conference website, check that out. We have it posted. You can download it, share it with your superintendent, take it to anybody you can beg, borrow, just like get to the conference. There's so many people. We'll probably have about 300 attendees, an array of speakers, great set of vendors. We're so excited to host everybody and bring the industry together. Cause that's what it's all about. SCN Expo Reno, December 4th through the 9th. We have some great stuff planned there for you too. STNExpo.com. Make sure and go and check that out. Special thanks to Transfinder, our sponsor of this week's episode. Really appreciate that. Go check out the October issue of STN. It's on the website. Go search it out. So much great content. STNOnline.com. Latest and greatest stories. Taylor teased it as well transportation director of the year guys we're going to be announcing that on the front cover of the november issue so keep an eye out november 1st for that we're going to see you know a lot of uh, mystery around that taylor who did she see lots of excitement so we'll be uh really excited to share who that director is and talked about or her never know where in the world was taylor we should have a little game maybe maybe <laughs> well guys you want to check out this podcast make sure to review it Go on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, stnpodcast.com. We'd love your feedback too. Make sure, email us. I'm Tony at stnonline.com. Send us a note, any questions. We'd love to discuss the big issues that are facing you and your district contractor. Anything you guys want to discuss. We'd love to have you. Want to be a guest too. We love guests. We love talking to people. So Rick Waltershed cover boy of the October issue. We are going to be talking with him what's going on in Goose Creek next week. So be sure tune in next week. We love you. Take care.